everyone. Welcome to another episode of Help with Natalie Cuomo. I'm here with comedian Che Durena. Hi. How's How everyone? You guys good? <laughs> How are you? I'm good, dude. I'm pretty good today. Uh, yeah, I'm feeling like rest and refreshed, all those oh, things. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you do anything to... Uh, nothing crazy. I'm big on uh, the cold shower. That's like the cold shower is clutch, dude. I, I, my really? buddy got me on that. Yeah, it makes you feel so good. You do the Wim Hof breathing, the hyperventilation no, stuff. No, I was actually thinking about that. Dude, do you do that? Gotta do it. You gotta do it. You can just do like his YouTube thing. He does like three rounds thing on YouTube, and that like it that like fucking gets you going. Does it make yeah. your dreams weird? Like, what is it? No, it just like it, what I think it technically does is spikes your adrenaline, so it gets you like super focused. But it also like breathing is connected into all sorts of different stuff. Like you, I mean, breath helps you meditate. Breath yeah. helps you like yeah, you can spike your adrenaline. He does it to like withstand the cold. He'll do it to like beat sickness. And he's even shown like I can teach this to people and it in in a matter of like a week and I and they can do this to a very high effect. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, highly recommend checking out. It's it's it's, it's worth it. Yeah. And I was gonna say, I I just moved into this like beautiful new apartment building nice. and the one thing is like you can't control the shower temperature. Oh what? It's crazy. Like it, is that a feature of the place or no, there's just... no, you just there's only one thing to turn the shower on and like nothing to control the temperature so every day is just like a very hot shower what the fuck did you I, talk to your landlord about this i Did texted we... him yesterday like the list of issues yeah like because you can't cook without like a fuse going out but it's like a beautiful place but just like a laundry list of fucking... it's like beautiful luxury like there's so many there's like washer dryer and unit you're like yeah. all right i'm living the life and then you try to do something and it's dude it's, it's a scam shitty. bro i got a little like my i like my place a lot yeah but when i moved in yeah a bunch of the lights w didn't work yeah um the washer there's a washer dryer combo in there it didn't work uh oh. i look up at the ceiling there's no fire alarm like there's we hate that. yeah, I was like smoke detector or whatever. Like I was like, what is going on in this place? It was a complete shit show. Uh, and then just you just have to bug the hell out of your landlord and be like, hey, can you fix this? Can you fix this? And then eventually, hopefully, they fix so it. So that video you posted of because obviously I'm like I just hardcore stalked you this morning on TikTok. Loved it, love it. The video you posted showing your room is that your real apartment? Mm -hmm. You don't have a mattress. You sleep with your mattress on the floor. Mattress on the floor, baby. I've been mattress on the floor for years. Why? Mm. So, bef I had a bed frame for a while. Okay. And then I moved places. This is when I was still living in Toronto. So, I moved places. And then when I moved places, uh, I couldn't get the bed frame, like, in through the door. So, then I just went mattress. And then when I moved to New York, um, I when I moved into this place, they were like, oh, the girl who was here before left, like, her mattress, her dresser, and, like, a couple other things. They're like, we'll clear that out. I was like, no, you can leave that. I'll rock this. And so that was just what was there. So I just like kept that set up. I'm like, yeah, this rules. Do Okay, so when you bring women over, do they make a comment? Sometimes, yeah, yeah. What do they say? Do you uh, warn them? Like, if I, I... Oh, I tell them. I tell them before. Yeah. Really? I, I talk about my comedy a lot. So a lot of the women who I'm like hooking up with, they they see the act and they go, oh, you weren't joking. I'm like, nah, it's all real, baby. I'm authentic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh but they comment but it's like also i don't have a bed frame but uh -huh. i'm a, a good time okay. i'm like uh tiktok famous mm -hmm. and i make decent money like dude i'm a pretty good package over here <laughs> i agree minus the bed frame and the and the no sh the fitted sheet going all wacky. okay the fitted sheet i try that guy i yeah. try to get him on but every time because i also have to step on the bed a lot to turn on the ac oh my god yeah. so you get a so every time I step on it, it just like pulls the sheet up and then it's always like popping up on a corner. That just is it's like this endless game of whack-a-mole to keep <laughs> the fitted sheet down. OK, so let's talk about your TikTok. Yes. Huge. Blew, blew up in blew the last, what would you say, last few years? Yeah, I think it, I started like posting seriously December 2020. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's about two and a half years now. And it was just pandemic. I mean, like we're both stand ups. Yeah. Pandemic happened. You couldn't really do stand up. And Toronto was way worse than here in terms of lockdown. Yeah. Like it was just way, way longer. Um, so I was like, what do I do with all this time? I'm just gonna, I, I'm not doing stand up. So I just started cranking out content like crazy. And then it just took off. Uh, and then when that took off, it like leveraged me to be able to get like representation, start going on the road, start touring. And now people come up to the shows. Like I did a show last night at Brooklyn. I just did like a little one off. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was hanging out with people after the show and they're like, yeah, we came and we didn't even know if you were like good or if you were funny. And I'm like, which is fair because <laughs> I don't post a ton of stand up. Yeah. I, I do clips here and there, but it 
they they're mostly all go to the YouTube. But um, I, I'm like, yeah, stand up's what I've been doing the best. That's like my main thing. So now all this like TikTok traffic I've driven, it's now convincing this whole audience that like, oh no, I'm a stand up first and like a TikTok creator second. That's cool. It's Is that cool. a challenge or? It's a good challenge to have, man. Yeah. I would way rather be in this situation than have like no audience. No, 100%. Mm. Do you feel like, is there a reason you don't post as much stand-up? Mm. I think from what I've seen uh, and have heard several different creators talk about, like if you are like, this stuff I make is like comedy reaction content. Right. And then if I wanted to do like gaming content and I start posting gaming content, there, the gaming content just won't perform well because that's not what these people watch. So you have to like start a separate channel, which I've done. So now I have like a separate TikTok just for stand-up clips. Oh, cool. I still will post a stand-up clip and be like, let's see how it cooks. And sometimes they cook, sometimes they don't. Yeah. And then my YouTube, is, I'm trying to do all just straight stand-up. All okay, stand-up, cool. long-form, like, crowd work stuff, uh, shorter clips and stuff like that. But that's, like, w that's part of, like, making that shift now. Yeah. Yeah. How do you... How do you pick the videos to react to? Oh, I have like a whole process of how I go through that. So I'll like start with, I usually start with Instagram because Instagram is my baby. Like my Instagram algorithm knows me better than any algorithm <laughs> on the planet, dude. Um, well, you think Instagram's listening more than everyone else? I think I give Instagram more data than anyone mm. else. Like I look and interact and talk and share yeah. and on Instagram more than any platform. Instagram rules. I like, like Instagram the best. Um, but I... I so I'll go to Instagram. I will go to like my main feed, and I set a timer because if I don't set a timer, then I I just get lost in the yeah. shit. So I'll set a timer for five minutes. Scroll for five minutes on my main feed. Timer goes off, and whatever I like, I'll save into a folder called TikTok. So then I just save, 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 and then I'll go over to the Reels feed. Do the same thing. Then I go over to Reddit, and then I do the home page and the popular page. Then I go to uh um twitter and go to like the what's the trending videos thing and then i do the same thing on tiktok but on tiktok i'll do five minutes of what i've been tagged in and then i'll do 15 minutes scrolling my for you page liking and commenting so, so you like get my... paid to watch videos essentially oh, yeah dude and i love watching videos it's one of my favorite things okay man. so your three categories that i see of videos you like yes like sexy weird videos yeah People getting hurt. Yes. And then I don't know that they're like just weird, gross shit. Yeah, gross shit for sure. Like toenails, stuff like that. Like the toenail removal. I. I oh yeah, that. no, no, no. I don't enjoy. It. I, I mean, I guess it's fun to watch someone react to it, but I it's. Love it. Like I, uh, blackheads is my big one, and I tried to do blackheads on my channel, but no one was taking the blackhead Damn. stuff. But I really like. I could watch blackhead removal stuff for hours and i've had I've, I've like typed in like hashtag blackheads on like instagram and then just like scrolled and see what i can find so do you okay do you feel like you've ever posted a video about someone like making fun of them and they've responded and gotten mad no i've never had anyone get mad really um yeah like maybe they have privately and i just don't know yeah i try to be very positive in the content i don't want it to feel like oh, i'm roasting these people or something right. like i want it i i'm usually commenting on the absurdity of what's going on it's because a lot of these videos it's like a girl in a bikini and she's got huge boobs and she's like doing carpentry and her boobs are like completely out and like that isn't a that's an absurd thing and she knows it's absurd and we all we all understand <laughs> where this is going it's all driving traffic probably to like a, a lincoln bio or something like right that. um which i think is fucking great but i like to comment on the absurdity of all this stuff going on like uh there was one girl who had a video of her putting up a mirror or something she was like you're gonna watch me like install this mirror uh and so she's like taking it out of the package like putting up the nails and stuff and she's wearing these little shorts that are like hiked up her butt crack uh and i did a reaction to that and i posted that and she messaged me being like oh that video made of me is jokes uh, oh that's nice yeah. and okay wow i have so much i love this it's funny because i feel like people if they've ever reposted something of mine i never reached out to them regardless of how i feel about it but i was just thinking like do people yeah i guess i feel like you can get action that way Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Like, have you ever hooked up with a person you made a reaction video of? No, but I am feel like it's it will happen eventually. Maybe not a reaction, but <laughs> I've been, like, hit on by some porn stars and stuff like that. Like, yeah. me and the porn world are starting to, like, collide. Like, it's like... <laughs> 
when you watch like a, a superhero movie and you see the multiverses like <laughs> two meshing together uh it was completely unintentional but i react to so many like only fans girls and stuff like that and it does drive traffic to the pages and i make a point of tagging everyone right. i always tag because uh that's just uh it's not even like um i just think it's shitty not to tag people yeah, like, when you're using their content i'm like using to react to so it's like it lets all and it helps the engagement because people are clicking on the link and all the yeah. stuff and then they are they're happier it's literally like a, that, i think that's part of why people don't get upset it's like a complete they opposite get, response yeah. yeah they're they're like oh he's crediting me and i think if you don't credit someone you might not want to because you're you don't want them to see you shitting on them right but i'm not shitting on them and i'm like yeah i want everyone to interact together but i think yeah down the road someone is something like that might happen there's a few porn stars who i like i'm like you know who i am like angela white follows me <laughs> alexis fox follows me uh kazumi <laughs> follows me like they're all like i'm like these are like the goats man yes yeah that's an accomplishment. I'm, I'm I'm happy about it for what, sure. What's your type? Like, are are these girls like your type, or oh, is it totally different? So I'm like, man, I will fuck anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's but, why it's not a compliment when a guy thinks you're hot. You're like, yeah, you think a hole in the wall is hot. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that is <laughs> very true. But I do like I like I like meaty women. Uh, I love like tattoos. I love like I've described. Uh, the women I'm into, it's like, you know, you know, in uh, Beauty and the Beast, how everyone gets like tr turned into something. Yes. The chick who I'm into would like get turned into like a dive bar. Like, <laughs> <laughs> just like all of her tattoos or like the graffiti all over the walls and stuff like that. It's like this smell in there. Like, I like when a girl looks sticky. Also, sticky? Sticky. Yeah, yeah. You like, you like nasty, nasty. kind of like nasty do you like when Do you like when people smell? Yeah. Like, not in, like, a gross way. No, but, like, but they oh, have, like, like a smell. smell. Yeah, I love a smell. I like big, thick, like, mangy hair, like, lioness -y kind of hair. I really like that. Um, eyes, like, fucking big eyes, like, a green, blue, like, really deep, colorful eyes. Those, those are all, like things that will trigger me for sure so are you like a like a fuck boy or are you like a relationship have you ever are you like a relationship guy i haven't had a relationship for a long time yeah. i am slowing down now. yeah i am slowing down I, i'm like dating more seriously now so like when i really? go on, when i go on dates i'm thinking about like oh, i do i want to have a long-term thing with this person that's nice yeah and i'm 31 now so it's like yeah i gotta slow down eventually um but I wouldn't say I'm a fuckboy per se. Yeah. I think fuckboys lie, and I don't lie. I'm very honest. Okay. Like, if I'm hooking up with a girl, and she's like, like, what is this? I'm like, I really just, I just want to have sex. Like, we can be fuck buddies if you want. And if you're not, if you don't want to, that's fine. But the, I don't want to take this. I anymore. feel like the problem is, like, every single guy, every single time a guy says to a girl, like, I just want to hook up. The girl is like, I see a challenge. Yeah. And they're like, yeah. I'm going to make him love me. Yeah. And I feel like that is, like, every woman's, like, worst curse i i and when i hear that i'm like that's you're doing that to yourself you can't do yeah. that because it'd be the same with like a guy was like oh well i'm gonna make you love me or something like that it's just just don't like if someone tells you that don't do it because then if you do rope them in like maybe you will maybe you yeah. will like just fucking grind them down and then they're like fine i'll date you <laughs> now you have this like re not resentful but this like apprehensive apathetic person dating you who's like i don't really want to be here but yeah. i got got like pushed into this situation and that's not someone you want to be dating you just find someone who like actually wants to date you what are the things that are the things that you react to the things that make you the happiest like is that if i looked at your page i'm like is this you uh i think pretty close it's like a lot of the content i like there is a bunch of stuff that i've tried to react to that is never taken like i love like dog videos and stuff yeah the, i the, when i did those people didn't care about me reacting to dog videos. Were, were they cute dog videos oh, yeah. i love a cute <laughs> dog video and it's literally me like look at how cute this son of a bitch is look at this little <laughs> guy work? they didn't like it i love a cute dog man um what else is like really big on my feed i just like like funny old people that's really good yeah. like I, I I follow a few of those accounts where it's like an old person has accidentally posted and it's like them tapping on their screen and then the camera like switches and they'll put on a filter by accident <laughs> and then they upload it like they don't even know how they uploaded it. I follow those accounts and I wait for them to post because it's a mistake every time. So I'm just like, oh, another yeah, one like, came out. Yeah. It's like it's like some artist who never releases music and they're like, oh, they put out another one. <laughs> the oldies. Yeah. <laughs> What's your response to people that like, 
are like I feel that a lot of comedians are angry when someone sells tickets through their TikTok or Instagram mm-hmm. or social media following. And like my opinion is that that is that is work the same exact way as anyone else is doing work. And also like you're doing stand up alongside that. Yeah. Like is that something that you've had to navigate or is it? I think uh, I, I'm very lucky that in the way I popped, I had been doing stand up for like seven or eight years before I popped on social. So you were ready. So yeah, I had the I I've been touring, headlining. I already had an album out. Like I I had been in the game for a while. So when I popped, I was like just start going on the road, crushing. Um, so when I think coming here, that was a lot of people's like first thought it's like oh is he just some tiktok guy and then when i do well they're like they they're like okay i can i can respect him um i don't see any problem with people using obviously like i'm doing it yeah but i think it's just this is the evolution of the game if you don't want to do it that's fine don't do it but it's like when people started going on late night it's like when um when people started doing like hbo specials and stuff like the all of these things that are like normalized now were evolutions at one point and you you have the opportunity right now to evolve with it the podcast is another evolution of ways that you can like grow an audience and have like autonomy in your career and control how you get fans and how you grow like if we want to go all the way back we can go like to the cat skills where people there was like a list of jokes on a board and they would literally cross out the jokes because everyone did the same street jokes yeah. and, and comics would use each other's jokes and s- steal in quotations jokes from each other because everyone just you had there's like a bowl of jokes but now it's like comedy has grown so much and comedy is like so mainstream comedy is going in the direction of like music where you're going to have all these different genres of comics all these different audiences matt rife is a perfect example of this where like matt rife has taken nothing off my plate man like his audience is like you got girls that are like 22 years old and then like moms that are like 40 (laughs) and like you would never see a comedy audience like that 10 years ago never and so he's him and a whole bunch of other people who are like using social and these other platforms to grow themselves are expanding and and getting more people interested in comedy and there's a chance that they go to his show and then maybe they go to my show and then there's some cross-pollination but just the idea of going out to comedy and enjoying it normally is being is being more common of a thing i agree i also feel like it's not like you're in a room acting auditioning for the same part like yeah. there's no competition i don't understand i mean it's just a lot of people's jealousy and insecurity but yeah. as someone that like developed a big following online while i'm doing stand-up mm-hmm. i definitely i've definitely noticed uh resentment other comedians have towards yeah. it it, it, that's their it's their insecurity it's oh it's totally an insecurity thing um and it's just like you can just do it you have control like there's yeah. a, a friend of mine who was like ah, i'm not gonna post and someone was like what the fuck are you doing post and his first post did like 1.7 million views and he's like all right i'm gonna do like yeah. yeah and it's like just posting stand-up clips and stuff and i think it's I think it's better because you have more control of your career. Yeah. You're not waiting for Johnny Carson to shake your hand. You are just like, I'm going to start making stuff and cranking it out and posting it out. I do think if you're like an older comedian, it's not so much like learning the platform that's discouraging. It's like if you've been at this game for like 20 years and yeah. then you do a post and it gets like 200 views, that can be a little discouraging, but you just have to you do keep that. keep going. You have to push through it. Exactly. Like my YouTube is ass in terms of views, but it's like, going up like yeah, a little bit by little bit bits. like we posted a video last week got 700 views last this week it did 1100 views a different one i'm like well, let's go we're moving up like and you just have to enjoy those like little victories like that um how do you how do you do you delegate like your like editing and stuff to other people so you can focus on your content yeah so uh instagram tiktok that's all me uh, all my reposts that go out on Twitter, uh, my assistant does all that. Um, and then I have uh, an editor who I will send timestamps and footage to. So I have two editors. I have one who works on long form, one who works on short form. Huh. And I'll send them just like, here are the timestamps. Here's the footage. Go through, like e- edit it down. Then they'll send me the version. I'll watch it, make sure all the subtitles and everything are right. And then everything's good. I'll take all the short form videos, the long form. I send over to my YouTube manager guy. And then he does thumbnails posting manages to make sure everything gets up and then my youtube manager guy also does all the gaming content so he does he edits the long form and the short form the guy who i do the gaming content with does the short form clips so, so you, you game also oh I we game. both stream on twitch oh yeah, yeah what yeah. games do you play oh dude i'll play anything i got back into bloodborne recently okay i played d4 for like a second like me and my buddy were playing d4 we we're streaming it and it was like 
he kind of hit the nail on the head with this. He's like, this game is just soulless. Like if you're going from like room to room and you're breaking all this stuff and like, it's, it's like kind of fun to level and get the gear and stuff. But it, I really am playing the game just being like, I wish I could skip all this leveling and just go back to max level and then just kind of play around with different specs. And that's not how you should feel playing a game like that. Uh, but yeah, I'm playing Bloodborne again. I'm trying to get the Platinum in Bloodborne. I'm two trophies away from the Platinum in Bloodborne. And I'm like fucking loving that ride. Uh, and then I'm probably going to go back and play Sekiro again. I love the Souls games and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then, oh, and fucking Miyazaki has another one coming out in, in August. Really? Uh, Armored Core 6 is coming out. What consoles do you use? Uh, I'm PS5 and PC. Those okay. are like my main ones. Uh, I have a Switch. I started playing uh, Tears of the Kingdom. Oh, yeah? And I I, I think I'm liking it. Uh-huh. But I, I'm i so busy right now that I only have like like maybe 30-minute chunks to sit down and play games yeah, most of the time. Yeah, you have to like... You have to dive in. And when I'm playing the game, I feel so rushed. And it's not a game you want to feel. You want to be like, what's that tree? And like, go look at the tree <laughs> and look around and do everything. And I feel like I just can't enjoy the game because I don't have the time to enjoy it. I'm having. So I recently got uh, I'm like a Nintendo Switch hardcore. I recently got uh, AMD built me a PC and mm -hmm. I. I can't make the, I'm like not using it. I can't make the transition into like using a keyboard mm. into, I haven't even hooked up my Xbox controller to it. Damn. What's your advice for getting into PC gaming? So I was the same as you like three years ago. I'd never PC gamed. I just got a gaming laptop. My buddy who I stream with was like, listen, you gotta, you gotta get the gaming laptop. And I, so I dropped like, I don't know, it was like, uh, 200 uh, or like $2,000 on it. And I was like, okay, I'm going to get into it. It is weird. You just have to use it. You just have to use it and use it and use it and use it. And you'll just like get better over time. Start with like shooters are a really easy thing to start with. Don't force yourself to like, if you're playing like, um, what are they called? Like, like a 2D side scroller, like a Metroidvania or something like that, like a Hollow Knight that's a controller game you don't got to do that on fucking mouse and keyboard yeah but i would like play some fort fort's a great one to get into fort is like so even with the building oh no building you go no build okay no build fort is so fun there's so much content it's so like welcoming to new people it's uh, so digestible it's so fun i fort's like one of the best games running with right keyboard now. or do you hook up a controller i i so i was doing mouse and keyboard for a long time and then my laptop kind of sh uh, shut down so then we uh started streaming from my buddy's perspective and then i was playing through the playstation and i was like oh i'm way better on controller okay yeah but it's a good way to get in is playing the the playing something like Fortnite. I feel like when I'm playing on the keyboard, like I was playing Portal. Yeah. I feel like I'm fucking in elementary school and I'm learning how to type again playing these games. Yeah. Like it's so like my brain just doesn't have the muscle memory to it, play on a keyboard. It is hard, but you will get it over time. It does take work. If you once you get good at that, then it's going to challenge yourself with something like League or mm. Fuck, what's another one? Di uh, Diablo is another gr great one I, because then you're doing different things like click to move, which is like a whole other like thought process of how to control your character. I hate click to move still. I think it's like an archaic old system of movement that sucks, but a lot of great games use click to move. So then you can be like, okay, I'm going to try this now. And then you can keep sort of challenging yourself in different ways. So if you have... You have content creating, gaming, and yes. stand up. Yes. Stand up obviously is everyone's favorite. Yes. Right? What it, I mean, how do you rank those three? Do you like doing all three things? Oh, I definitely do like doing all three things. Like the content creation is the biggest of the grinds because that's yeah. like every day you're making stuff. Everything you look at, I'm like, like, oh, should this be content? Should this be con uh, uh, content? Like me and my buddy, we love watching like really shitty movies. Mm -hmm. um, like just any like blockbuster, like the Fast and Furious movies and shit like that. And then we'll, after the movie, we'll just shit talk the movie and just like laugh and have such a good time. And I was like, should this be a podcast? And yeah. I, and I was like, no, I don't want to commoditize this <laughs> We need to thing enjoy my... some part of life. Exactly. So like that it, part of your brain of like trying to content everything, I try to turn that off. Um, and some days I don't feel like I have the videos to react to. I don't feel funny. I don't feel like I have the right things. Yeah. So that I feel like is the hardest of them. Gaming is like, so gaming is my least like engaged platform and least profitable. 
Um, but I love gaming. Like, <laughs> I love it. I have a daily gaming news podcast I listen to. Like, I am so deep into gaming. I've been since I was a little kid. So that's, like, just a complete passion project, like, love of the game thing, uh, where, like, I could play video games for hours and hours and hours and stream for hours and hours and hours and never get bored, whether it's giving me money or not. And then stand-up is, like, my first love. Like, yeah. stand-up is, like, I stand-up is what I truly think I'm the best at. It's what I truly think I can be great at. Um, and it's what I work hardest in, in terms of like, I I have the best mind for it. Like I, I'm learning to get better at content creation, but I've, I'm still a baby at that. Where stand up, I'm like, I'm 10 years in, which isn't, there's a lot of guys who've been doing it 30, 40 years. Yeah, yeah. But I'm good enough now where like I headline and go on the road and I can crowd work and move in and out of stuff. And I have these skills and abilities that I didn't five years ago. And and then I'm like, how do I get better and keep getting better and keep evolving this? Now a big thing that I'm trying to do in um in New York is like do more black rooms because there's like there was like one consistent black room in Toronto uh -huh. and so it's like it's a different audience it's a different vibe how do how like what jokes hit and don't hit and it's like this is a new way to challenge myself in stand up so that's i i ranking them would be hard but i would say um like content creation is the hardest of the grind uh video games is just fun but stand up <laughs> is like that's like that's what I, I, I've always said. Everything flows back to that. Yeah. And like, I make content so more people come out to the shows. I, I go on podcasts and do all these things so more people come out to the shows. I, and the, the gaming stuff kind of feeds the stand up, but it is just a lot of fun too. But having that as like the central piece kind of gives me a guiding light of what I say yes to and no to. If I get an offer to do this thing, you want to do a merch deal, you want to do that. I'm like, does it make me better at stand-up and get more people to come out to shows? What did you, I mean, what were you like as a kid? Were you into, were you very funny? Were you the class clown? Like, um, kind of. I consumed a lot of stand-up from an early age. I did do public speaking in elementary school and high school, and mm -hmm. I would make the speeches funny. So that was like kind of stand-up, I guess. Um, and then I didn't even think of doing stand-up until I was like in my 20s. Uh, but yeah, I guess I, I was... I definitely loved comedy. I, I like consumed The Simpsons and stuff like crazy. That was like the first funny show I really like got into. Um, but I've always liked like in terms of what media I'm consuming, comedy has always been a big one. What was the moment where you're like, all right, I'm going to try stand-up? So my brother started doing stand-up. My brother started in, I think I was like 20 or 21. And I had been like watching stand for years. I think I'd, I'd written a few jokes at this point. Um, and, but I didn't, I thought you were, you had to be famous to do stand up. I thought like, uh, stand up was a byproduct of being famous. Cause you watch like just for laughs or you watch all these things on TV right. and you just have like huge crowds. And then you're like, Oh, well they're there because these people are famous. I didn't realize it's like, no, the stand up makes you famous. Um, and so when he was like, Oh yeah, I'm just going to open mics. I was like, you can just go to open mics. And so I wrote jokes with the intention of giving him the jokes. And then I was like, well, if I can write the jokes, just, just. <laughs> do it and so then i just started doing it and just was like grinding at it grinding at it does he still do stand up no he's he, he uh had a kid and like you know life gets in the way yeah, you're and like stuff. i got the career yeah, like, <laughs> i was like i'll take it from here <laughs> nice okay so i was watching some of your sets you were a uh, a scuba diver instructor yeah I that's was, yeah. so completely random yeah it was kind of like a means to an end uh my parents were really pushing for me to go straight into university out of high school mm -hmm. and i uh i found a scuba diving instructor course through a college that was like on the coast of british columbia and so i went over there did that course then once i w once i graduated it was like two semesters graduated i was an instructor now i was like okay well what am i going to do with this and then i i just looked for jobs found a job in mexico went down to mexico was instructed there for like two or three years and then that's where i started doing stand-up in mexico started doing stand-up in mexico did wow. it for like tourists at some little dingy bar uh and then i was like okay well i really want to do this and then i just like sold all my scuba diving gear and moved to toronto was there a point in your life where you were like i love scuba this is my career no no never. no no never. it was always a means to an end it was like i'm uh i it was like the perfect thing where i didn't want to go to school mm -hmm. i hate school um my parents were like pressuring me to go straight to school i found this way to like just bullshit the whole thing like i'm like i'm not really going to school i'm going to school to be a scuba diving instructor and 
like I get to kind of fuck around and my parents are like whatever satisfied with this. Yeah. And then it also gave me an opportunity to move out. So I got to move out, go to college, and then I got to move to Mexico and just like fucking hang Why out. Why Mexico? I, it's, it's where it was like the cheapest flight and best paying job. Wow. That's all, that, that's all it took. Okay. So what is the best advice you've ever received? Best advice I ever received. So this is something that rang in my head when I started doing stand up. Uh, when I was like, I want to say in high school, maybe middle school, um, I was like, I like I said, I always hated school. I never tried. And I always coasted through all these things. And my dad came up to me one day and he was like, every day you come home, you throw your backpack in the corner, you don't do any of your homework and you get C's. Imagine who you could be if you tried. And that like rang in my head when I was started doing stand up. And I legitimately had never tried anything before. I never pushed. There was one thing I pushed at, which was my when I was graduating the scuba diving course, I thought it was gonna fail and I didn't want to fail. So I studied. It was like the first time I had ever studied. <laughs> in my what life. is this? I was like, all right, I'm gonna learn. And then I was like, oh, I like aced it. And I was like, okay. And then so when I started doing stand up, I was like, okay, well, what if I like Right every day, and I watch a bunch of stand up, and then all the advice I get, I, I like I implement it, and I'm actually gonna work hard at it. And then it's just like things started to come together. I like that. I feel like that is good advice for a lot of people. Imagine how good you could be if you fucking try. Yeah. A lot of people are just coasting. A lot of people coast. A lot of people coast. So it's like just putting in the effort. It's um, it's rewarding, and it feels good. It feels good to like get shit done and and feel accomplished. Yeah, I was reading. I read this quote that's like really sticking in my head. You know, Mark Manson. He wrote the subtle art of not giving a fuck. Yes, yes, yes. So he said, if you want to feel good about yourself, do things that are worth feeling good about. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm on my third week of working. I like never worked out. I'm on my yeah. third week of like working out every day. Yeah. And he also had a quote about working out, which was like, imagine there was something that is completely free, makes your sex life better, makes you happier, makes you look better. Oh, there is exercise. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, shit. So I feel like those like little things about actually putting effort into your life wind up making such a difference like if you actually push yourself to do something you don't enjoy yeah that's I and i think that's a lot of people's existence yeah is yeah you sometimes you get caught up in something and you and you do something because it's it's safe and it's easier and or you have uh, requirements to people you have a family or something and you you can't take risks in certain ways but if you you find these ways to edge out things you love like okay i'm going to work out and you find a passion there or maybe it's like reading or writing or what well, you're, you're knitting it's like find these like right. sections of your life that bring you joy when i was I think, I, oh man, I can't remember how old I was. I, I just started doing stand-up, and I remember this. I remember being, like, hungover and feeling like shit, and I was having a shitty day, and I was, like, sitting on the edge of my bed, and I was like, oh, man, what makes you happy? And I was like, mm -hmm. okay, fitness, video games, and I was like, I just started doing this stand-up thing. I really love this. And I was like, okay, what do you spend all your money on? And it's like, or all your time doing it. And I was like, going out and drinking and, like, trying to chase girls and stuff. And I was like, okay, how about we take – a bunch of time away from that and we give more time to these three things and always keep those three things in your life and then you probably will have like a base level of happiness always and i've since i've done that i'm like always feeling pretty good i like that how do you okay so are you were you always a type of person that like went out just got girls all the time like did that change for you when you started like getting more success in your career and did you feel like a sort of like like, what was your response to that? I don't know. I've always been very loosey goosey sexually. Yeah. Like I've I've never, I don't know. I've never really thought about being monogamous. Okay. Um, I think maybe I could. Um, <laughs> like, <laughs> you're like the biggest red flag ever. <laughs> maybe I could. Maybe I don't know. Probably not. We'll try. I uh, I've always thought it's weird how taboo sex is. That's something I've definitely always been had. Like a I I see people like everyone's fucking. Everyone wants to fuck. Every mm -hmm. people are like so much of our society is based around desire and sexuality and lust and like there it's like undertones and all these things. But we're supposed to feel ashamed of it. I always thought that was so weird. Yeah. So um I've definitely been horny and like a run around <laughs> trying to fuck for a long time. Long time. Yeah. It's, it's very authentically me. It's so I'm the opposite. I'm like, a well, I'm very, I've always been very sexual as mm -hmm. a person, but I'm a hardcore, like monogamous, like yeah. boyfriend girl. Yeah. Now engaged girl. But it's interesting because I can't even imagine, like, if I go, if I went on a date with someone, I'd be like, 
Can I imagine a future? I would ne- fucking w- is never fun if they don't love me. Mm. I don't. But men are so different. Men are very different with like, that. It just I don't get it. I think some dudes are like that. Some yeah. dudes are very like, no, I just want my lady, and that's me. Um, I like I'm very sex and like love and relationships are two very detached things for me. They don't even need to be next to each other in order for them to exist. Huh. Um, like. I the people I have sex with I don't necessarily need to be like oh is there anything going to be the future I don't even really need to like hang out with them like maybe I'll like hang out with them for a bit but sometimes the sex is so good that it's like you're just engaging in that it's like uh, eating a, a, a candy bar or something like it's just fun it's good it's exciting it's maybe it's bad for you maybe it's not whatever but it's it's the indulgence that's fun I like to sit down 10 course meal at a yeah. restaurant <laughs> you want to take your time yeah. Yeah. sampling all these things <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. And that's great. That's great. Don't get me wrong. No, I think men in, in general have a very like different perspective towards dating mm-hmm. and in, it towards like needing some sort of intimacy emotionally before you get physically. Into yes. It. Yeah. I yeah, I don't really need that. What is your advice? Like, say there's men listening to this. Mm-hmm. They just can't fucking get laid. They can't get they laid. They can't get laid. What's your advice to them? I think be honest. Definitely the more honest I've been, the easier it's been for me to get laid um and like usually if a woman wants to have sex with you she'll give you a sign like it's hard to pick up on those signs sometimes but if a girl like stares at you for a certain period of time like and also have the confidence to go up and talk to people like that is a big thing of like just shoot your shot go up and be like hey like i I think you're cute can i buy you a drink and if she goes like no be like okay sorry i didn't mean to bother you and then just like walk away (laughs) like just shoot shoot be honest uh like don't yeah like don't bend your your idea of what you want like me being like i don't know if i could be monogamous like if i was on a date with a girl or if i'm sleeping with a girl and she's like hey like do you want to date and i was like i wouldn't be like yeah maybe or like i don't know like oh like that right. floaty fuck boy kind of thing or lie to like try and keep her around i would be honest be like i hey, listen i don't know if i could be monogamous if you're down to like maybe go out for food and stuff and then i can keep fucking other people like i can <laughs> do that so what what would your advice be to people that are afraid of reje- that rejection? Because, like, a lot of the guys I know that, like, don't feel like they're, you know, getting what they want. They It's that fear of rejection that makes them not ask people out. Um, I think it, once you do it, it, you do it, eat it, don't, like – mull on it like do it and feel it feel the rejection but then also feel how fine you are i i used to have really really bad social anxiety and so i just started to force myself into different social situations like hitting on women or you're in an elevator with someone someone walks in and i can immediately feel my anxiety flare up be like oh hey what what are you doing today and then just spark a conversation with strangers and the more you do that for one not only does it get you better at like doing that but it removes the anxiety and the fear like you and then you start to feel so much better because you're not walking around with this latent anxiety all the time so yeah just be accept the fact that you will get rejected Mm. and that the rejection won't kill you or hurt you and if you approach in like a polite uh honest nice way like say i think you're cute can i buy you a drink that's like not aggressive it's not crazy you're not going up and be like yo some like weird nagging thing (laughs) yeah just and and I think that shot alone is like so confident and so direct that sh- most women will le- be impressed enough that even if they don't, are not interested at all, they'll be very kind and being like, "Oh no, I have a boyfriend or whatever." Yeah. Um. Yeah, but yeah, just do it. Just do it. You got to do it. Nike. Nike. Just do it. Yeah. <laughs> That he's getting laid. I honestly, it's interesting because like stand up, I feel like the only way I became good at stand up is from failing five million times. Yeah. Like you have to bomb, you have to fall on your face to be good. And then you shift your perspective and you're like, wait a minute, every time I fail at something, I'm actually getting better at it and becoming a stronger person. So I feel like if you look at asking people out like that, but people, people get stuck, man. People do get stuck. But you, yeah, you just got it. New York's a great city for it. New York is like, if you live in New York City, man, like, there is so much opportunity to talk to girls and everywhere like there it's insane man and lots of times that like in new york city almost makes you bad at at picking up women because they initiate 
all yeah. the time. Like I'll be out at a bar or whatever, and some I'll like go to get a drink. Girls like, where are you from? I'm like, man, I'm trying to work on my shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying, up, yeah, I'm trying to get better at this, and it's like you're like you're starting the conversation. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh my god, that's me. All right, we're gonna pull a tarot card. You said you have mixed feelings on. Tarot. I do have mixed feelings. I, like I don't believe in tarot, but I also don't fuck with anything spooky. <laughs> I don't fuck with no spooky shit. No, like Ouija boards. Like, do I think a Ouija board does anything? No, but will I touch it? No. <laughs> that's my that's my stance on it. I feel you. I think tarot is like a little is a little less spooky than a Ouija board because you can dismiss a card. You can't dismiss a ghost. You can't dismiss a ghost, and you're like inviting them in or whatever. Not that they're real. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't. It's so weird. I don't think I. I guess I believe in like maybe sp I'm like spirits, but I don't. When people say there's a ghost in their house or they say they see a ghost, in my head, I'm if I'm being honest, I'm generally thinking, all right, you're that's not real. Yeah, yeah. I'm on the exact same page. But then I'm also like, if there is a weird thing happening, maybe it's not necessarily a ghost, but it's the thing that I don't know what it is, and I don't right. like that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, you shuffle these cards. Okay, I shuffle. Put some Che energy in there. Okay. Do, okay, how does the tarot work? Do you have to, like, ask me a thing, or do you just pull the cards and they give you the... Usually I just pull a card. I just think, like, what do I need to hear today? But what is there a topic you're thinking about? No, no, there's nothing I'm really questioning right now. I'm actually in a pretty solid place. All right, let's change that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, cool. Actually, the last three times I've pulled the same card. Oh, spooky. So hopefully, we won't do that. What, what do we need to hear today? Huh. Okay, this is the three of wands. The three of wands. Yeah. Okay. Now, this card, I don't necessarily know the meaning of. <laughs> I love that. You're like... This one, no fucking clue, dog. This one. <laughs> are, you, are you getting anything? This looks positive, like there's a light of sunshine. There's some, yeah, there's some, let's Google it. I've got a book, I've got a book. Oh, you got a book. Okay. I've got a book. Well, Google I like, though, because sometimes it's different than the book. Uh, All right. Sorry, I just got an email from the New York State Tax Department. I'm oh, like, fuck like, taxes. What is that? Three of Wands, Envisioning the Future. Three of Wands indicates you've had continued support from others, and with their help, you formed a sense of self, of your values and morals. But now it's time to rely on yourself for guidance. Clarify your goals, cast others' needs aside and opinions aside. The future is infinite, and it's yours. No one else can see through its layers of light and shadow. Well, that sounds pretty sick. That's a badass that's, card. That's a good card. I like that that's card. Like, <laughs> other people know. have helped you, but now it's time to fuck, I gotta fuck be, them. Dude, fuck them do and just be sick as fuck, dude. Your future's lit, dog. I see this like a window to a positive future. Oh, yeah, in, absolutely. Inside of the wands. Yeah. It's just like... Yeah, it's like, yeah, you're seeing, like, it's very, it looks like the what, the infinity stones just, like, floating around in there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like that. that. And also, it's kind of like setting boundaries with things you like and don't like. Yes. Is there, do you have any pet peeves on the road? Like, you get to a club, what fucking drives you nuts? Um, I don't know, pet peeves on the road. Honestly, all the clubs I've worked have been really great. Really? Um, yeah, I don't know, um... Yeah, I honestly can't think of one. Everywhere I've gone has been like sick as fuck. That's awesome. Yeah, like they're they're always like there's certain clubs that are like crazy good. Like the Miami club was like I was like you guys don't have to treat me like this. Which like the Miami Improv. Yeah, they like pick me up in like a like a secure like security van thing. Like the guy like I have private security drive me around. When I'm at the club, they're like securities around me the whole time. Wow. The, the menu had like references to things i'd done like i worked for this uh page called herb i worked for this youtube channel called most amazing top 10 and they had like the most amazing something like tequila they or something. made your own menu menu i was like man they, this is too nice <laughs> i was like well, yeah so some places are like so like not that other places aren't good but it, it just like i was blown away yeah um but um uh, yeah I, I i i don't think nothing's bothered me that really been really good yeah wow that's that's awesome why do you have a bad pet peeve on the road um I think it. I mean, honestly, it bothers me if someone's in the green room talking incessantly. That oh, that drives me insane. Yeah, I just yeah. can't. I like can't. I'm trying to focus. I don't like. It's not even that I want to focus. I just. I. I get so much social anxiety. Social interaction so draining for me that it's like the yeah. last fucking thing I want is someone being like. Ah. Yeah, right before you go on stage. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But otherwise, nothing crazy. Yeah. Fair, nothing. Fair. I. I liked. Um, 
I think Joe Liss once said this advice someone gave him opening for this guy. He was like, just don't speak. Yeah. And then the guy booked him for every single gig because he just like <laughs> didn't talk in the green room. And I love that. <laughs> That's great advice. If you're man. an opener, don't speak. Don't speak. <laughs> Headspace is very important before you go do stand up. Like, yeah. I, I remember I did. Uh, I think – where was I? I think I was in San Jose, and I was watching The Last of Us. I was watching The Last mm-hmm. of Us on the plane ride over, and then I was in my hotel room. I got like uh, – what's that one that's big out in California, that burger chain? In-N-Out. Oh, yeah. I got In-N-Out for the first time, so I eat my In-N-Out. I'm like chilling, and then I'm watching The Last of Us, and I've played the game. I didn't finish the show, but I know in the episode what's going to happen. I know it's so sad, and so I was like, I got to turn this off. I was like, I can't get that in my head before I have to go make people yeah. laugh. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I I watched the first episode of that and it's so sad and so yeah. dark. I was like You're like I, I'm I, done. I couldn't do it. The third episode everyone really gushed about and I didn't think it was as good as people gushed about, but it is a good episode. It's it's a detachment from like the rest of the stuff going on mm-hmm. and it just is very cool to see. You see like one or you see two people's complete arc in the episode of their That's time cool. in the apocalypse. And that is yeah, it's just cool. It's cool to see that. Yeah. Sometimes like things will happen like the smoke in the sky a month ago and I was like is the apocalypse now? <laughs> oh dude, I'm down. But- I'm down. <laughs> oh dude, I want like Mad Max apocalypse. That's my favorite kind. <laughs> I want to be on like a motorcycle in the desert like a and like fucking some like too much eye makeup on or whatever like just going nuts dude i love <gasps> mad max apocalypse okay you making that motion made me realize the last thing i want to ask you about so your most viral tiktok is yes. about period sex yes are you really do you are you a period sex guy oh yeah i'll fuck on the period for sure even yeah, if yeah. you're like not dating you're just like let's oh, go yeah 100 percent. yeah really yeah. oh 100 percent. there's more than one girl who I've had a one night stand with who's been on her period. And you're just like, I don't give a fuck I or do you like fuck. it? Fuck. I mean, I don't prefer it. Yeah. It definitely has a smell. Of it, course. It has a certain smell. Um, but yeah, it's, it's I'm not like, oh, when she's on her period, like I'm there in a second. It's just not going to slow me you're down. You're not like a dog, like sniffing crotches nah, around the period. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll still eat a girl out too. Yeah. Like I will. Like, cause I just, you just don't put your tongue inside. You just put your tongue on the clit. There's blood's not coming out of the clit. Do you, I mean, do you guys respond to that? Say, like, do you feel like most guys like period sex or most guys are against it? Um, I do a bit about this where I'm like, if, like, I think if you have a blood phobia, it makes sense why you don't want to do period sex. Mm. Cause that's a whole other thing. I'm like, if a girl took down her pants and there were spiders, I'd be like, hey, hold on. Um, so I feel was- like if a guy, if I took down my pants and a guy's like, Oh, I have a blood phobia. I'd be like, fuck you. No, you don't. <laughs> 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 like I, I just, I get that. Like some people see blood and they faint and I'm like, mm. if that's you, that's you. But I think most dudes don't give a fuck. I, if it's a separate thing of you getting grossed out for whatever reason, I don't get that. Cause I'm like, I don't know. It's like, there's already stuff coming out of there. Where yeah, there's it's a different color. Yeah, there's fluids all over the place while we're doing this, man. Yeah, on the floor. Yeah, dude, <laughs> people are peeing on people. Like it's it's going down. Squirt. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Well, Che, thank you so much for doing my podcast. Where no can problem. people find you? We just you? do one tar- tarot card. Yeah, we, oh, we just, just do, do one, one card. Oh, sick! Yes, I like it. Fucking... You just got good luck, good future. Yeah, Focus on dude. yourself. Fuck everyone. Oh fuck yeah! I thought we were gonna do three cards. No. Yo, that's fucking legendary, bro. <laughs> Yo, I just got one pull and it was fucking sick as fuck. That's fire. Now you like tarot. Now I like tarot, dude. <laughs> um, yeah, you can find me on all platforms at Che Dorena. That's C H E D U R E N A. Um, what do you know when this is coming out? Um, uh, probably this week. This week, okay. I'm gonna be in Oklahoma in July. I'm gonna be in Vegas in July. I'm gonna be in Austin and Raleigh and there's one other place. I'm also going to be at Just for Laughs. Uh, but yeah, all the dates are at Chaterina.com. Little Dinky News on Twitch, Kick, and YouTube. Yay. Thank you guys so much. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.